What? Are you about to burn that car to the ground? No, of course not. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna burn it to the ground. There's air intake, air charge temps. Ridiculous. Not happening. Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I still have some ideas. We can still change the intercooler core and the heat exchanger. I think both of them are an issue. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Project Red Fire. We're working on the supercharger intercooler system. This has been an ongoing series. I think we're up to about part four now. We're trying to troubleshoot why we have really high IAT2 temps on our blower. It's a Gen 5 three liter Whipple and you get the engine up to temp, make one pass and you're up to about 190 degrees IAT2 temps, which is not correct for that blower. It's, it's outrageously hot, there's something wrong. So we've been trying to figure out what our fluid temps are, are we, is the fluid flowing? Are we cavitating? We added a temperature sensor into our reservoir. We added a flow sensor, both of which data log right into IMS3 so we can literally pull the values up on our logs. And what we've learned is that fluid is flowing and the fluid is of decent temperature. You can watch the previous videos and get all the details on that. I won't rehash it all here now. But essentially the flow is not fast enough, not for the EMP pump we're running. I have a feeling that intercooler core is clogged. And honestly, I think this heat exchanger is clogged too because the flow numbers of each one of them individually is less than a whole system combined should be on previous cars and other cars that I have tested. So today I think we're gonna rip this out and get a new intercooler core underneath this blower. It's a big blower. I mean, everybody wants more power. The blowers keep getting bigger and bigger, harder and harder to swap out. So this is gonna be fun. So let's dive in. Pulling off these fuel lines, you can save yourself a whole lot of smells and headache. Just get a couple of these little unions, dash eight, dash eight on each side, some caps like that. I put them together like this. So one end open there, I'll pull that fuel line off and I'll just attach it to here and boom, the fuel line is capped and sealed, set it aside. And then the open end on, on here, I'll just take the cap, cap that off, everything's sealed. No smells and uh, you know, horrendous fumes while you're trying to work in the garage. So why do we have to pull a wheel to take the blower off? Well, this car has a fuel line plumbed directly underneath that non-removable inlet. So the only way to disconnect that fuel line is to get to the other end of the fuel line, which happens to be in the wheel well. Hence, wheel off to pull the blower. Okay, I almost have this rear bolt here. Got this conglomeration of socket extensions that go down there between the fuel line, the rail, squeeze down. Ugh. So whoever says, Removable inlets are not needed. Needs to come work on my blower because it sucks. <laughs> All right, we have about everything taken loose now and it's about ready to lift up. Uh, not sure about picking this up. Normally I like to just yank these things up, but my left shoulder's a little bit tore up. I'm actually uh, have surgery in a few weeks. Um, on one hand, I'm thinking, you know, it's already tore, so what the heck, right? Just tear it a little more. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I don't want to really... Uh, extend my recovery time from surgery either. So maybe I'll get someone to help lift it up. Well, it looks like somebody went and tightened these bolts down with uh, superhuman strength. <laughs> I was struggling to crack these things loose, really fighting at it. And then sure enough, my, uh, Allen head tool snapped clean off on this one. It was the last one too. So there we go. A uh, five minute job just turned into a five hour job. Here we go. <laughs> well, I can't believe last time I was so lucky with something snapped off like that. I stuck a magnet over there and it came right out. Unbelievable. All right, back to work. All right, I got a replacement long Allen type hex tool to go in here. Uh, I think yeah, I might just try to tap it a little bit with an impact and see if I can get that seal to crack because the sheer force of just, you know, muscling it is just snapping these things. <laughs> Running out of tools. Let me say we snap another one. Another one. Oh man. Okay, now instead of these longer versions of these Allen heads that go up like that to get by this tight clearance, I found a short stubby one that 
fits in there. And then this extension here, a little, I mean, it's a little bit of pressure, but it gets in. So I have a, a much stronger piece here with a short stub in here. So let's see, uh, let's see what that does. <laughs> Got it loose. No casualties. Okay, we got most of all these bolts out. I can see uh, someone used some RTV, unfortunately, so this is going to be fun separating these two. <laughs> uh, we have an aftermarket manifold piece on here for the coolers, which is what made me suspect that there's something different inside of here or whatever's going on. I don't know, we'll find out here short enough. So uh, yeah, let's try to get all this apart. Got it out. <laughs> it is just a stock core. It has been opened up a little here for some bigger holes for better flow, but an otherwise stock core. So we're gonna replace this guy with this guy. This is the VMP cooler. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so much bigger. Wow. Longer and wider for that matter. I'm gonna to have to get some measurements on these when we get them off. I think we need to flow test them as well. We'll do some back-to-back -back testing here. See how it works out. That's incredible. I guess you can see right here how little edging there is here between the bolts. And look how huge the spacing is here. So they really filled out all that space to make a much thicker cooler, get a lot more surface area. All right, I'm excited for this. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. So in the front corner of the Whipples here, you can see the gasket surface comes right here and goes right across this hole. That's a huge vacuum slash boost leak. You're supposed to have these caps that you install on here. And you hammer them down flash and seal that hole. Wow, it looks like someone forgot to put those in. So we've been dealing with a leak here the whole time. That's interesting. I wonder how that's going to affect the tune. All right, let's get these guys out. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh dear, look at that. They're practically finger loose. Whoa, very bad. These will just fall right out into your engine, get ingested and destroy your engine. I always put red Loctite on these and I use a grade 8 bolt. Not because of the amount of force that the bolt needs to take, but so that when you go to back it out with the red Loctite, you don't snap them off. But these are so loose, they're just going to fall out. <laughs> Man, glad we discovered this now, not later. Something I've noticed on a lot of these parts I pull apart is when I rub through them, there's a white dusting or a white coating, which I think is some of this aluminum corrosion. Makes me think that this system had water sitting in it for a long time, just sitting there. No, no uh, antifreeze, just water. It's probably what happened to this core and maybe that heat exchanger. Just caused them to corrode. All right, guys, time to see what kind of upgrade we're going to expect between this uh, new core and the old core. So what I've done is I've plumbed it up here. Let me show you how it goes. From the EMP pump, we go through the flow sensor, it goes straight up into our core, from the core, it goes right back into the tank. So now we have a closed loop, rather than just flowing into a bucket for a, a couple seconds, we can run this continuously and get a, a good reading. Uh, once we get that, we're going to go ahead and then flow test this one, and then we're going to do a control test, which I will explain more when we get to. All of that's going to get data logged in here, we'll have all the readings on here in logs, and we'll be able to review and uh, validate what kind of upgrade we're looking at. Stop into cooler core. Okay, now for testing this VMP unit, I really wanted to use the new VMP manifold uh, that goes on here. It's a nice big high flowing unit. Unfortunately, because of supply chain issues and raw materials, they've been out of stock for months and I just cannot get my hands on one. So we're gonna have to make do with the uh, old uh, manifold that was on the car. Uh, I got these flow tubes that go from this larger diameter here. They're special ones that neck down to this smaller diameter. So we'll have a little bit of a restriction in the system, but it's the best I can do right now. Um, hopefully I can get my hands on one of the uh, better manifolds in the future and we can upgrade this. But for now, we're just going to have to flow test it with this and see what it does. VMP core. Well, that's not good. These O-rings were leaking a little. I need to look into that a little better. Glad that happened out here and not inside the manifold where I couldn't see it. Pulled this apart and I looked over these O-rings real carefully and they are not torn, nicked or damaged in any way. So that's a little concerning. I need to look into this. All right, it's fixed. Awesome. 
turned out to just be the o-rings the uh, o-rings were just too soft correct size but just too soft i put a harder style o-ring in there and boom it's fixed nice now we're going to do our control test where the line just simply loops around flows right back in the tank so it's just circulating in a circle so why a control test well it's nothing more than a benchmark just to see what the pump does without any restriction in it and then we can sort of make some assumptions or validations about what the different cores are restricting the flow it's just for interest sake to get the numbers yes we could look at the uh, published numbers for the emp pump but really we got to take into account we have a 90 degree fitting coming out on ours for the uh, fitment we've got a certain uh, length of line couplers it's going through a flow sensor uh, could be the voltage of the battery all these things play into effect so it's best we just do a controlled test and then it kind of gives us some more meaningful validation to the other tests that we did control test Okay, our control test was flowing about 22 and a half gallon per minute. This core, our stock one, was flowing about 10 and a half as we previously measured. And this one we were getting about uh, almost 16. So, what was it, 15.8 or something? So we have about five and a half, almost six gallon per minute increase on our replacement core. So hopefully that's gonna address all these cooling issues. You gotta love how much wider and bigger this is too. Pretty impressive. Well, look at that. The uh, supplied hardware has buttoned out <laughs> before it's actually pinched it down. That's a bummer because I got red Loctite on everything and silicon on the, the uh, <laughs> inner cooler. All right, I got the correct size bolts this time. These are 12 millimeters long. The other ones I had were 16 millimeters long, which actually looked pretty standard when I looked at some of my old hardware. I think it's just a matter of this flange being pretty thin and possibly these holes aren't drilled as deep as most. I don't have any other spare blowers laying around to double check, but not a big deal. Got the right size. Let's do it again. The more I looked at this, it's kind of interesting to, to look at the, how the airflow would come. It comes out of this intercooler, curls around the intake, and comes down here to curl to go into the ports, into the cylinder head. You have a lot different shape here now. Uh, more open space, which... You know, open space alone doesn't equate to better airflow because you've got to take into consideration what the air is doing. But it's definitely interesting to look at and think about. Let me get the intake on here and I'll show you what I mean. All right, here's the stock core where the air would come and flow down. It would hit this lip over here as the air would come around and tumble out that way. Now, if you look in here, it comes straight off this edge here and there's nothing. It's just that open void where it turns around and comes up. So... I really don't know if it's you know better worse or indifferent <laughs> at all but it's certainly interesting to think about and wonder you know how that affects airflow in the blower it's quite a difference so what's going on here well after i install the manifold back on there i always like to check this because you never know if those o-rings got damaged or if you know an aftermarket manifold's not sealing right or something's going wrong so i hook up a simple vacuum uh, gauge or pump i guess you could call it it runs off of compressed air Pulls a vacuum, seals up on here, and sure enough, mine is not holding a vacuum. And when I shut everything off, I can actually hear the air whispering real loud out of here, which tells me that it's coming from in there, something with the O-rings. So I gotta take this back apart and uh, look it over again. Great, a great idea, by the way. I mean, it's much better to find this than later on figure out your car's ingesting coolant or something else. Okay, here we go, watch this. Keep pulling a vacuum right here. We don't have to go too far, what, 20, 22, 23 inches of vacuum. Shut it off. Look how rapidly it's failing. And you can actually hear it right here. Okay, I have it holding a vacuum now. You can take a look there. It's sitting there at about 25, 26 inches of vacuum, and it's just sitting there. And what it turns out to be, you can see this is sucked up. There's no bolts in here. It's this manifold, unfortunately, if the tubes slide too far this way, they go off of the ridge on the end there where it goes into the curvature and air can shoot right around them. So by wiggling those tubes around, I can get it to seal and it stays holding. But that's kind of sketchy. If those things, tubes ever move, this leaks. Uh, <laughs> not really sure what to do that. I can't really control the, the tubes in there. Um, wow, so yeah, we need to get this manifold swapped out at some point. All right, I've been at this a little while. Every time I get this snugged all the way down, the, the leak develops. Once these tubes bottom out, leak. So I've been trying to set them up, you know, pretty tall up that way. 
The O-ring is close to the edge, but not quite popped out. And I'm trying to push them in here to where they mostly bottom out here and not here. Uh, this is a time I really wish I had a lathe. I could just turn a little bushing of the correct ID, drop it in this manifold, and then these tubes could slide down and hit that. And it would prevent them from bottoming out to go into the curvature of this area here and cause a leak. So I'll keep at this and see what I can do. Nailed it. <laughs> We're holding a vacuum and it's all assembled. The trick ended up being holding the, a gap in here with my fingers in there. And as I would slide the manifold in, I'd be like forcing the tubes into the core. And so they're seated more in the core than they are in the manifold. And we seem to be good. And you might be wondering, why didn't I just bottom them out in the core to start with and then just pop the manifold on? Well, the manifold has really sharp square edges. It was never machined with like a rounded bevel edge to where you could pop it on secondary. You had to put the tubes into the manifold first and you had to sit and work them around real carefully and lots of lube and often tearing O-rings trying to get them in. But that's what it is. It's in for now, so hopefully this works. Much better. Those fit in there nice and tight now. They were just dropping in here loosely. The old O-rings, I think, were the 2005 and up. It's a skinnier O-ring to use this newest silver body. Uh, I went ahead and ordered the correct ones. They're a little bit thicker bodied, and these fit nice and tight now like they're supposed to. I think we might have had uh, potential little vacuum boost leaks on each of these because they were literally just drop and fall right in and out. So I went ahead and swapped the O-rings and looking good. Yeah, let's see how much this thing weighs. At 84 pounds, that whole package. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right, pick it up. All right. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to end it off there. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this install, get everything all buttoned up and put back together. I think this was a huge success. We've picked up over five gallons per minute on our intercooler core. Five gallons per minute. That's huge. I mean, that's like a whole one of these every minute extra flowing. What? Oh, that's only a four gallon. But you get the idea. Proves my point. It would overflow that bucket every minute. That's how much more we're flowing. <laughs> so I think based on that, finding that, I think next time we're going to upgrade the heat exchanger. Uh, toss this one out and put a new one in in case it's bad. Uh, we're going to go through doing a GT500 style intercooler into an O3 Cobra. We'll go ahead and do some flow tests. We'll even do the one inch upgrade where you weld in larger inlets and outlets. And we'll flow test before and after and get some cool data, see what it's all about. So. Yeah, this should really help. If you guys are enjoying what you see, please like and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm, especially if you're new channel starting out. Be kind to one another. See you next time.